hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name's jason newland and this is boring objects please only listen when you can safely close your eyes because you might get bored and when you get bored you might want to close your eyes because you might want to go bye eyes or go sleep which is bye eyes or just relax can't believe i just i just said the word bye eyes uh, for the first time since i was about six and i'm not quite sure why i said it i do apologize uh, well, I don't apologise, but it's weird. I'm, I'm apologising to myself for letting myself down. Now, this recording, as are the other objects, the boring objects, is just a, me talking boringly about something for 20, 30 minutes. And in that time, you can just relax. Just you know, it's a it's a nice little distraction from your day to day life, and gives your mind something else to think about, which is completely pointless. Uh, and when it's doing that, you're not thinking about other stuff, which means you can just your mind can slow down and. You know, you can just have a little little bit of relaxation. So today, I'm going to talk about mops. I'm going to talk about mops, I really am. And uh, I know there's always going to be someone that's going to be thinking, how and why on earth would you choose a subject like mops? Isn't this supposed to be a boring podcast? There's nothing boring about mops. Well, yeah, fair enough. Um, I guess maybe, you know, occasionally I will do a, a subject that to a lot of people would be classed as very exciting, such as mops, but I'll just talk about my life because my life has been very boring, it still is, I have a very boring life, always have done, I hope it will, you know, improve a little bit at some point, but I had a very boring life, so by telling you about my life experiences with mops, even though mops is clearly a, a phenomenally exciting subject, maybe I can, you know, just find something boring in it. I mean, I realise it's a it's a big task. But, uh, you know, I'll talk about my experience with mops. And uh, you can make your own mind up whether or not this was uh, a boring podcast or just another excitement instalment in the life of mops. So, I'm trying to think of my first experience of a mop. I think we when my when I was a kid, my dad was always building, always doing building work on the house we lived in, and it was it would never seem to be complete. It was always there was always at least one room or one part of the house that seemed to be in disarray. So. There would be times when, you know, he'd, he'd try and get me and my 17 brothers to, well, he didn't try, he, he got us to work and to help. And sometimes, because I was quite little and young, I was, um, he'd get me to mop. That'd be my, like, get me to help clean up. Because I couldn't do some of the other more uh, physical or manual jobs because I was only seven months old. So, you know, I'd have, I'd have a mop. It would be a lot bigger than me. And 
probably my first experience with mop in my memory, or my, my first memory of a mop would have been Fantasia. Wasn't there a mop in Fantasia that was magic and it did its own mopping? Now, I thought that was a documentary. So when my dad said, I need you to mop the kitchen because, you know, he'd been putting in new units or something and uh, I think my brothers had vacuumed but they needed me to mop the lino. So what I did is I put the mop, lent it against the wall and clicked my fingers and I just waited for it to start mopping the floor on its own like in Fantasia, the movie. And now, and now I know it's a movie, but at the time I really did think it was an educational uh, film. And I remember thinking, oh, perhaps there's some magic words that I've that I'm missing, or some magic dust, or something, because just standing watching it doesn't seem to be doing the trick unless it's shy you know I've, got to, I've only got to find myself that a shy mop that doesn't like to you know magically mop things so in the end after about an hour I decided maybe I'll just maybe I'll show it how to do it if I get involved and I actually do a bit of mopping myself maybe the mop will get a bit of courage and a, a bit more confidence in himself and maybe then we'll do a bit of mopping and I'll be able to sit back and have a cigar but it didn't happen uh, well I didn't have any cigars but because I was seven months old but it's it was quite annoying because I really really wanted the mop to just get on and do its job but it didn't and I didn't really know how to do the mopping myself because I thought that mopping involved watching a mop mop the floor but for some reason this I guess the mop was faulty needed to be taken back to the shop uh, I did, I thought about it, like, how can I contact Mickey Mouse, but I didn't know. There, there was no internet back then, and we had a telephone directory, but I couldn't read at that time. So, in the end, I had to do it myself. I was very disappointed. And that was my first experience, really, of the mop. And I didn't mind it actually. The only thing about it is doing underneath the counters of the kitchen, the some of the shreds or the I don't know what you call them because it's a mop, isn't it? Got lots of different strings. Some of them would get caught underneath the the edges of the uh, bits of the kitchen and would pull off, which meant I had to. Uh, kneel down or and, and get, try and get them out again which I didn't find enjoyable I didn't mind it but I didn't find it enjoyable it wasn't I didn't do it once and think I've now found the passion in my life you know I didn't didn't really gain any kind of sense of um, uh, I don't know satisfaction or uh, nothing seemed to be, you know, it's just a bit tedious, a bit, a bit annoying. But I did it anyway, and I mopped the floor. And my brother said, "Oh, that's not done properly." And I said, "It don't matter." And he said, "Boy, well, there's a big streak all the way down the floor that you've not cleaned." And I said, "It doesn't matter." And my brother said, "Why?" I said, "Well, no matter how I do it." Dad's always he's going to find something wrong with it. It's not going to be done right. And he said, oh, that's a good point. 
so he tipped the bucket over and all the water went everywhere and he found that funny he thought he was being helpful I don't think he thought that actually but uh, in the end uh, I cleaned it all up and that was it that's the end of that story really it wasn't wasn't an exciting story I think I might have gone out into the garden and looked at a tree for because I used to quite like doing that going into the garden and just looking at a tree because we had a few trees in the garden one really big one which had pr no not prunes plums it was a plum tree the one fruit that I didn't really care for if I'm honest not really a plum person now plums can be nice uh, you know if I guess like a plum pie or a plum crumble with lots of sugar to make it nice and sweet but plums on their own eh, no I'm, I'm quite happy just to to remove the memory of the plum tree from my mind really it's it didn't hasn't left me feeling fulfilled so but I think I did do that I used to go out in the garden and just stare at a tree and sometimes I'd move my feet around do a little dance but a very slow dance in fact slow so slow that no one would even know that I was dancing it would just look like I was occasionally moving my feet very slowly but I knew I knew that I was dancing so that's what I did and I also knew that um, it didn't matter that others didn't know I was dancing because I was dancing for me I was I was dancing to fulfill my own needs which was to dance in the garden very slowly and the reason I didn't dance quickly is because I wanted to savour the moment I wanted to enjoy each movement without having it all done you know moving too fast and then like thinking well that's that's that done now that's the dancing out of the way um well that's just I wanted I wanted the fun and the pleasure to last a, a little bit longer than it would have done had I moved at a quicker pace now other mops I had a job in a bakery when I was about 13 and I had one of my jobs in there in fact it wasn't just there I had a job in the, in the restaurant which was part of the bakery before I worked in the bakery and I used to do the washing up and uh, like kitchen porter kind of thing so part of the job well the big part of the job really was to rinse the plates off put them on a rack put the rack inside the washing machine wash them and then put them into the rinser which would be it would like rinse them rinse off all the water you know all the soaps and stuff at a very very hot level of water and then leave them for as long as you can before touching them because they were very hot to the touch but sometimes when the restaurant was very busy we had to take them off the rack fairly quickly so there was no drying involved because the water was so hot that the plates would dry instantly and then I would move the, the rack where the plates would go would be, be
behind the sink and the two washing machines. Well, a washing machine and the rinser. So I would move them with the plates and put them onto the shelves of, you know, the big metal shelves, quite a few shelves. And then the waiting staff would take the plates from the other side and use those plates to put out onto the table or to um, put the food onto before taking the food out to the table. I guess that's a more sensible order of things, isn't it? Put the food on the table first. Not on the table, put the food on the plate before taking the food out to the table. Otherwise, well, it's in your hands, isn't it? It's just messy unhygienic I imagine but back then we didn't have hygiene or germs Ger germs weren't even known about um, I think it was almost compulsory to if you worked in a kitchen to either smoke or pick your nose if you was a cook that was I think it was uh, in the contract I do believe so at the end of the to be actually not even at the end of the day because the, the, or the evening, because we were working with water, uh, bits of food have fallen on the floor. Sometimes we would have food fights. We weren't supposed to, but I don't know, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Sometimes life presents you with an opportunity and you need to grab it with all of your hands. So... That's what we did. We chucked food at each other and it went on the floor and became a bit slippery and a bit dirty. And So usually halfway through, it'd also be water spilling on the floor from the sink as well. Halfway through the shift, we'd give it a good old mop over. Give it a sweep first and then mop the floor because that was a way of cleaning it and then at the end of the shift you know when we'd all finished we'd do the same thing again but because we'd done it at, in the middle there was less dirt to clean and it just didn't seem to take as long um, at one point I thought maybe we should just have the mop there and mop every 10 minutes. But no one seemed to be interested in my idea. I wrote it down, I presented it to everyone that worked there. Thought maybe have some kind of uh, vote. But no one was interested. So we just went back to the normal process of mopping the floor halfway through the shift and then at the end mopping keeping it nice and clean and if I remember rightly part of my job was to also clean the kitchen floor as well the the kitchen where the the cooks and you know had been dropping food and all kinds of stuff on the floor but it was tiled the floor was tiled so it's fairly easy as long as you don't let it build up over you know a few years it's quite easy to keep the floor clean if you regularly mop so I guess it all worked out quite well now the next time I used a mop was when I worked in a chip shop. And as you can imagine, um, they served chips and fish and things. And pies, saveloys, uh, what other sausage rolls I think. Rolls, bread rolls, gherkins. So I think I had pickled eggs as well, and pickled onions. Oh, 
What other things do they have? Ribs as well, these um, burgers, yeah. Different types of fish. Mushy peas, that's another thing they used to sell. A lot of effort goes into making mushy peas. Really pointless. And, I mean, it doesn't, mushy peas don't taste horrible. They look and smell horrible. But they don't taste, it just, it's like Kermit's not. It's just, it just really, it's the wrong colour. Nothing should look like that. It's about to go in your mouth. And there should be laws. But it was quite popular, considering I lived in the south of the country. Because I know it's popular in other parts of the country and has been for a long time. But 30 years ago, when my boss of the chip shop first got mushy peas, he was one of the first... I think he was the first southerner to ever not only sell mushy peas in a chip shop but I think he was the first person to ever even say the words mushy peas no one knew what they were we had to explain it to people we put a big sign with a picture of this illuminous green gunk and People would say, what's that? And I'd say, it's mushy peas. Can you not read the sign? And sometimes they'd get annoyed and say, that's rude. We're just asking. We didn't mean what's it called. We can see it says mushy peas. We just don't know what it means. I said, don't you watch Coronation Street? Again, I was told I was rude. What what what's it got to do with me? What programs they watch? Like, well, if you watch Coronation Street, you'll know that mushy peas is very standard in a chip shop. It's a sort of normal thing. And again, I was told I was rude, explaining to them about a TV program when I should be getting their food for them. Like, okay, all right, just trying to help. And. Um, after the first three weeks, uh, my boss banned me from even talking about mushy peas because apparently I was putting people off. You know, he thought, well, his idea was by the staff trying to sell the mushy peas to the customers as a new thing, a new exciting thing. Um, you know, the greatest creation for 400 years you know that was his mindset and I argued I said well maybe the greatest in 200 years but not 400 years and we'd argue and always ended up in a pillow fight and uh, so that was fun but it detracted from the customers because we were supposed to be serving them and so there was a mop there anyway there was a mop and the floor, my my job was, it's like ongoing mopping, you know, continuously ongoing because I would mop the floor in the kitchen and in the chip shop, you know, area. There was a restaurant there as well, but they had carpet, so I didn't need to mop the carpet. So I'd mop the kitchen at night. I then also mopped the kitchen in the afternoon when we shut down for three hours. And again, I would do that in the the chip shop part where we would fry the chips and also the other side of the counter where the, the customers would stand and bring in dog poo into the place on their shoes. Because this was the 80s and every third person had dog poo on, on the bottoms of their shoes and at one point I started to think that maybe the shoe shops were selling 
the shoes with dog poo on them already but I was told that, that was a really silly idea and I really should grow up but I just thought well I'm looking around and yeah there's a lot of dog poo and but really one in three people it seems like quite a high percentage and I remember my boss saying to me can you just get on with the mopping please and I was like okay fair enough so I'd mop after lunchtime finished the kitchen and all the other areas and then I'd mop again when the evening finished but the area between the kitchen and the chip shop bit would get wet because we'd have to go into the back where the chips were prepared and the fish and everything get some chips out of a bucket of water and then carry them into the chip shop area and water would just be going everywhere now the initial fun of seeing people slip over wears out after a while especially when they have to go to hospital and you're left short staffed and you have to work harder so I kind of thought I'm going to start mopping and I think that sometimes we used to put paper down but it wasn't a very good system not a very good system to be trace traps in water all over the place and then there was oil oil would get on the floor from the fryers and that would be a hazard so luckily nothing nothing bad ever happened but I would uh, try and keep the place nice and clean on the floor when at all possible because that way it's a less of a job if you do it if you if you keep it clean you haven't got to do much at the end of the day so that was the chip shop um, I worked in a where did I work I worked at a canteen of a bakery and again same kind of thing I'd mop the floor at the end of the day and it was fine um, I just, I didn't mind I've always been okay with mops always kind of got on with them uh, because I've, obviously I've been using mops since I was a small child and it's quite a nice way to clean using a mop and some nice hot water with laxative or whatever they put in the water and it just really I don't know it's, it's kind of therapeutic a little bit a little bit just a nice relaxing end of the day just a little bit of mopping and uh, while everyone else is standing there with their coats on waiting for the five o'clock minute to hit the clock thing so they can leave I was never in that much of a hurry I like to wind down with a good mop and but before that I forgot about this I was a cleaner so you should do a lot of mopping supermarkets uh, toilets in offices uh, kitchens and offices and uh, so there's a fair bit of mopping there but because they were done so regularly they never really got that dirty apart from one place which was a supermarket and there was a little bakery inside the supermarket you know one of the ones you go in and they do cook the stuff but it's not a big place but it's big enough and there's a counter at the front and 
when I was cleaning the supermarket in the morning, they said to me, or my manager said, how would you like to clean the bakery tonight? And I said, why are you talking to me like that? She said, what? I said, well, normally you talk a bit quicker. You just suddenly start talking very slowly like that. And she said, well, you talk quite slowly. So I figured you maybe was a bit, a bit behind, you know, a little bit slow. So I thought I'd try and uh, communicate with you in a way that you could understand. And I said, oh, okay, thanks. I didn't realise she was being helpful. And so I turned up, I was given the keys to this, this uh, bakery. Now, this floor, and I know this because having worked in a bakery previous to that, and worked in catering and you know, floors, but I've, I can't really say that I've worked with floors, but I've worked on floors in catering. And this floor was completely solid dough, dried dough, crust, and it was probably about an inch or two thick. Now, the first thing I thought is once I clean this up, when people get back to work, they're going to think they've shrunk because they're all going to be two inches shorter from the ceiling. But um, I never got to hear if that was true or not. I spent about five hours in there trying to clean it and... I got a lot of it up and you know I did sort of try it. I did my best with the time I had but eventually I had to eat and go to bed the next day I had a complaint that it wasn't done properly and I had to say to my manager listen manager that floor has not been cleaned in months and months and months if ever it was the worst floor I've ever seen and I've seen a few floors over the years it was solid 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 and I managed to hack through to get to the actual uh, I don't know if they had either lino or slates, probably slates. Most places back then had slates for, um, you know, for floors in catering. But it was really, I put so much work into that and at the end still got moaned at. a bit annoying you know I've had a few cleaning jobs over the years where I've cleaned I've mopped toilets I've mopped lots of toilets hundreds and hundreds of times I've mopped a toilet and I'm trying to think when other times I've had uh, a mopping experience Experience. Um, no, that's about it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I was really going to be able to think of lots and lots of wonderful stories involving mops. But that's about all of my experience with mops I've shared with you. So, 
Yeah, that's it. That's the end. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.